We are now live. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Poly One Specialty Inc.'s uh, Facebook, Facebook Live events. Um, we are basing these live events on requests and questions we get over the week. So if you guys have anything you want to see, let us know, and we'll try to get it on. Um, this one's based on Union Inc. Uh, we've had quite a few questions. And today we have Carl Reeves, our product manager for Union Hello, Carla. Hello, Ray. Did I say your name right? Uh, you, you sure did. Carla. Oh. <laughs> oh, Carla. <laughs> I didn't roll my R's. Sorry. <laughs> and, then, and we have John McGee. Uh, he's here because he's all knowing of Union products. He's been around them for a long time. All I can do is base my comments on my experience with Union over the years. Uh, he's going to probably answer most of the questions. So, um, we, we want to start in with a few things. One of the questions uh, have been come across the forums recently is there's some misunderstandings about union products. Um, first of all, John, can you explain the mixopaque and the maxopaque systems, the differences? In yeah, I can, but uh, do we want to quickly just kind of go over the history of union real quick since we're cel uh, celebrating oh. your next year? Oh, well, that sounds good to me. Yeah, I, I can start with that if you like. Oh, yeah. um, so I think I already mentioned this during my last Facebook live session that we will be celebrating 90 years in business next year. So we are very, very excited about that. Um, Union began as a family owned company. And when the owners decided to get out of the ink business, they sold the brand and that's how it became part of what we know now as the Poly One specialty inks. Um, a fun fact that I like to mention is that Union goes back long before Plastisol was invented. And uh, you'll be surprised to know that Union had produced inks for other things such as newspaper printing, um, letterpress, and offset printing, among other things. And this is how Union became, became known as the brand, basically, that had an answer for everything. So nowadays you can find Union Ink from the smallest mom and pop shop to the largest one. So this is very, very exciting how everything started. Now we want to switch and start talking about what the current portfolio is. Um, Union has different ready for use ink. We have also a mixing system. We have a four color process system. We have the plastic charge and we have a vast number of special effects. But if we want to pick what Union is probably most well known for is for the high opacity creamy ink, um, very rich colors. So we can focus on that. And I think that's what John can talk about, max opaque and mix opaque now. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Union has a theme of high opacity ink. So we'll talk about that with, with some of the other systems as well. But max opaque being the most famous, uh, it's interesting the history behind it comes from the, the invention of the flash unit. So, you know, back, I guess, late 70s, early 80s, the, the flash comes around and you're going from printing white last to printing on a white underbase. So you're coming back from whatever trade show and they tell you, well, check this out. You print on a white underbase, bright colors, uh, use this flash and charge your customers for another screen. Well, people weren't quite ready for that yet. You know, they, they knew the practice, but their customers weren't yet ready to pay for another screen. And then, you know, your smaller mom and pop shops. That's, that used to be a big expense back then. It used to take several days, hours, you know, a much longer time to make a screen back then. Um, so Union came out with Max Opaque ink, and Max Opaque is a self-underbasing ink system. Um, it's referred to as triple opacity often. I consider it, you know, double opacity just to keep things simple in the shop. But what Max Opaque allows you to do is if you're printing a red uh, image on a black garment, print that red, flash it, and then print red again. You can print flash print as many times as you want, in the 80s, that kind of bulletproof print, people thought that was quality. If you printed a soft print, they might think you're trying to cheat them out of something. Uh, but Max Opaque gives that, that ability to print flash print. If you're doing SIM process on a smaller automatic press, I've been able to drop a screen here and there by just using this full uh, intensity dots. But your regular day-to-day -day printing with an underbase, you're going to want to uh, cut that Max Opaque in half with our soft, uh, our soft hand extender base. So when you add that soft hand extender base one-to-one -to, -one to Max Opaque, you've made a high opacity, medium opacity ink. So our regular medium opacity inks in the Ultra Soft series and the color matching system for that is Unimatch. But for Max Opaque, uh, you don't want to just run it straight out of the bucket unless you're going straight to garment. 
In my shop, usually we, we buy max of paint two gallons at a time. My guys need to put one gallon up on the shelf for concentrated ink, and they would cut one bucket in half of the soft ink extender right away. So we're essentially getting two buckets of medium opacity ink out of that that we can run our automatics a lot smoother than the max of paint itself. So a lot of the questions and concerns I see on forums are just people using it incorrectly. You know, they may say, well, this union ink is really thick or it fibrillates. You want to <clears> stir it up, fold it, and then reduce that down one to one. And you can go beyond that. Uh, in some of the old material, it says you can go up to three times. I actually had a, a machine rep come in and feel one of the shirts on my wall. And he's like, John, when you buy this super expensive press from me, this water base is going to be so much easier. I'm like, that's max opaque reduced down by 70%. So you, there's a lot of versatility there with Max Opaque. I even, you know, if I'm doing a, uh, a foil job and say that the foil underneath is red or the foil on top is red, instead of using a glue, I use the full strength Max Opaque, print that down, heat transfer to that. And if the foil ever fails, who cares? There's still red underneath it. You can do a lot of cool effects with that. But essentially that's the, the right way to use Max Opaque. And there's a lot of other mechanical adaptabilities that run after that. But Max Opaque also has a color matching system called Mix Opaque. And I'm going to use an older card here to show you that. So here are our standard colors here in this area. And anything that has an M there is available in Max Opaque. Up here are the Mix Opaque color system. And these are your finished, uh, ready for use, finished mixing system. Right. So what that means is all these inks are standalone inks. If your customer looks over here and sees a color they prefer over here better, you can print it just like a regular Max Opaque. These are just optimized to use our color formulas on unionink.com to come up with pretty close Pantone matches. Uh, where the weakness on that is going to be on the, the bottom two colors on your Pantone deck close to the hinge, it's going to be a little hard to hit those colors because we do have a high white content to help with that self underbasing. But uh, again, with Mix Opaque, if you make a Pantone match with that, you, if you're going to print on underbase, cut that in half at least with a soft and extender. Well, it's great to, to mention that, especially on the uh, Mix Opaques because they are more like single pigment colors. They're cleaner when you mix them together. You may find when you get in pre-mixed colors that are a specific color, uh, Max Opaque color, they may have two or three or four pigments in it. And when you start mixing those together, you start seeing, oh, this is graying out. So, you know, I've always leaned toward the mixing systems as my finished ink. And since it is strong pigmented, you can extend those and be very successful at it, especially with simulated or what you mentioned earlier, going for a water-based feel. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. That's great information. Since you show the old union card, I want to take the opportunity to show the new one. And uh, this is available, guys. You can order it through customer service. We have it now. And same thing, we have all the review colors here and the mixing systems on the other side. So, <laughs> all right, so that, that was great information, but that, that brings us to another question that we commonly get, and is what is the difference between plastic charge and discharge? So, Ray, do you want to take the uh, classic discharge? Yeah, the, you know, the, obviously the classic discharge is all water-based. Um, you have to prepare your screens to be water-based. Uh, you... You're using a discharge base, you're using a um, pigment, you're mixing it, adding ZFS, and you've got an all stand standalone uh, system that will replace the color of the garment on, um, on the garment with the color that you're mixing. Um, it's quite different from plas you know, the, the um, plastic charge, which is something I've used quite often uh, in my days uh, for many reasons. But John, you explain how um, the plastic the, 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 the uh, plastic charge works with plastic plastisol inks. It's Absolutely. a good mix. It's a good way for someone to get into discharge printing for the first time. So you know when I first started uh, messing around with regular discharge, it was several components. It was up to six parts. Uh, you know with plastic charge, the immediate appeal was it was super easy. You're going back to your max opaque system and not you know with with a water based system you have your pigment concentrates, binders, lubricants, all your different additives up on your shelf. And that's a separate system to whatever you're using on your plastisol side. So plastic charge allows you to use your plastisols on, on your shelf, your max opaques, they're strong enough to hold that color value with the plastic charge system, a lot, very similar to the way that we reduce it one-to-one -one with the soft tank extender. If you're making plastic charge, you're gonna add plastic charge, one part to one part max opaque. Max opaque having that triple opacity is gonna be able to hold that color value. Um, then you're going to add your ZFS based on just the percentage of the plastic charge additive. That's where most people mess up. So if you're doing 100 grams of plastic charge additive and 100 grams of max opaque, 
a lot of people will add those to the 200 grams and come up with their 6%. You wanna just base that percentage just on the plastic charge additive. And then with your reds, if 6% is working for your different colors, back off by 1% and do 5% for red. For whatever reason, ZFS likes to attack that red pigment. But you know, for me, the big appeal for plaza chart is I live in Colorado. I'm in a high desert environment. It's super dry here. Every, year round, you're constantly shocking yourself, you know, uh, static electricity wise. So you know, water base just did not stay open the screen very long. Max Opaque gave me that opportunity to keep the screen open a little bit longer while I'm trying to register my screens. It was a lot more forgiving. Um, I guess, you know, one of the keys there is, you know, if, if you don't, if you have low humidity, plastic charge is a little bit, you know, better friend for you in that case. If you want to experiment well, like that. Yeah, and obviously you're not non-PVC, but you you get that feel. I think most customers are not requiring you to use non-PVC. They just want that feel, that look. You get the same, you get the same soft uh, appearance and, and feel when you put the shirt on. Uh, I really like it. I also, I mean, I, I know we were going to mention this. I use plastic charge all the time as an underbase for an overprint plastisol with uh, with an extender, and it, it came out fantastic every time. Instead of using a white underbase on 100% cotton, I would use the the uh, plastic charge in my day. It's nice. nice. And once you wash the garment, you can't feel it. You know, coming off the dryer, you're going to feel a little bit of a, a media there. But once you wash it, it feels just like a water-based product because you've made a hybrid water base out of plastisol and water. It's some weird Middle Earth sorcery and magic in there. It's, it's cool stuff. That's great. That's great. That's great information. So this brings us to another question that I normally get. As you know, in the Union portfolio, we have the plastic charge additive, but we also have the plastic charge white. So sometimes I get questions if we can just mix a Union white with a plastic charge additive and that will automatically create, let's say, a finished plastic charge white. Or what, what can you say about it? Absolutely. You know, ideally our plastic charge white is going to be brighter white. It's going to be, you know, it's less work for you to do. But in a pinch, if you're out of it, add a cotton white to the plastic charge one to one like you would a max opaque and then activate that with a ZFS, probably about six to five percent ZFS activator. Nice. Cool. That's a really cool information. Yeah. So let's move on to the next uh, system. I get requests for the four color or the CMYK processing. Can you guys explain the difference between the Union uh, True Tone series and the Triple Strength series? Absolutely. Uh, the regular True Tone series is your standard CMYK inks. Uh, so these are semi-opaque inks that you can you see through, so you can get your tones through the uh, the inks there. And the original True Tone series was designed to print on a white shirt or a really light garment. So if you think a light ash or a light tan shirt, you can get some really good results with the regular CMYK inks. But who wants white shirts anymore? I mean, I don't own that many white shirts. I um, do. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ray and I wear a lot of black shirts. That's all I wear. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, rock and roll printing, you know, uh, you know, things in the action sports industry, you tend to have darker colored shirts. And if you're going to do a CMYK process on that, we have the triple strength CMYK. That's the True Tone 3X. Now, it takes a bit of skill to underbase that with a plastisol white because you're essentially printing a semi-translucent ink over a piece of plastic. And that can be difficult. The, the CMYK can pull a little bit or try to slip. So a better option is to use our, our uh, Union Preprint Clear, which, which is a discharge, okay. or a plastic charge white, or a, a standard discharge, and print that CMYK right over it. But you're going to find with any, you know, if you never play with CMYK, magenta muddies everything up. And nobody ever really sticks to the same. Nobody prints CMYK. We all have our different go-to. Ray has a different go-to than I do. Uh, that's why it's nice to learn CMYK in a manual press, because you can switch up your... Uh, your order and find out what works best for you. But uh, with your, your triple strength and your stri uh, single strength, we have what's called the magic numbers on our website. In fact, uh, Bennett Northwest Graphics in Minneapolis sent me a care package this week of old magazines. We, we showed a couple of ads um, and this uh, thing that people may not recognize. It looks like a save icon. That's a three and a half inch floppy disk. disk. I haven't seen one of them in years. <laughs> yeah. But on here are your profiles for uh, Photoshop. Now, if you don't have an old computer that runs this or a reel-to-reel, -reel, because we have that too, <laughs> uh, go to unioninc.com, click on tools, and then click on magic numbers. And those are your profiles to download to correct those, those color curves in Photoshop. Yeah, you'll find that most times when people are first trying to do a four-call process, we'll get that phone call. They'll say, your inks don't work because it came out all dark and muddy. 
Well, it's not the ink, it's the separations for the ink. Photoshop will give you the best possible separation with the color it's given. It thinks you're using swap colors for offset printing. Right. So you have to tell it what you're using because obviously pigmented inks are more have more strength than the swap. So you, you, need, you need less information, basically. So for instance, if on a swap, you might need a 50-50 mix of magenta and yellow to make a great orange. But in textile, you probably need 20% magenta and 100% yellow to make that same orange. So it knows what's, what to do when you give it the profiles. I think I, you, you, you have to have these in your separations um, for Photoshop or else you're gonna have a tough time on press. Absolutely, and then speaking of that, if you know, if you're new to CMYK, uh, and, and right now seems to be a good time to experiment with new print processes, set up your press, uh, you know, tr try to you know, look and research your, your uh, print order or call one of us, we can give you our ideas there. But basically you wanna start off with some controls in place, uh, set your squeegee angle at about 15 degrees, your pressure on say like an MNR press, your air pressure on the uh, squeegee, start at 35 PSI, and then use a 70 durometer or a 70 90 70 durometer squeegee for that. Now, nice you're going to adjust your opacity. What's that? Nice and clean, sharp squeegee. Yes, sharp, clean squeegees. And then as you need to add more color, you can add your PSI or you know, pull back on your PSI. Well, guys, well, great information once again. So let's get into everyone's favorite subject, white eggs. So I get, as you know, we have in our portfolio several different white eggs. And I get the question, one, why do we have so many? And two, what's the difference between one and the other? So can you right. guys why do we have so many white eggs? We have so many because there's so many fabrics. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And there's so many opinions on how it should run on press. So we have right. manual and automatic. We have, you know, 100% uh, cotton, 50-50, uh, tri-blend, poly, 100% poly, so on. So. That's yeah, why so, so many whites. We, we've developed a white pretty much for every application. Uh, we have cotton whites, low bleed whites, poly whites, and nylon white. Um, so starting with your cotton whites, this is a passive ink. There's no active chemistry in there. It's just simply a bright white. If there's any chemistry in there, it's to optimize it to make it appear brighter white under fluorescent lights. Uh, so starting with our cotton whites from Union, our two best sellers are bright cotton white, which matches low bleed diamond white which we'll come back around to, one of those kind of love it or hate it uh, inks. Our and best then, seller, the diamond white ever. <laughs> right. I know, best I seller, know. yes. It's never going to go away, whether you like it or not. Never. Yeah. So, uh, we've got bright cotton white for that, really easy ink to use. If you need to make that into a discharge, it's a perfect ink to move, uh, combine with the plastic, plastic charge additive. And then we have lunar cotton white. So lunar cotton white is a part of our Stellar Series whites. These are all calibrated to have the same matte finish, a satin feel, and have that optical brightener to, to make it appear brighter white under uh, fluorescent lights. So if you open your bucket, you see a little bit of bluing in the top, mix that back in, but that's part of that the, uh, color optimizer there. Um, moving forward into our low bleeds, we have low bleed diamond white. Uh, you know, it's when it's fresh in your hands or fresh from the factory, it's one of the best inks in the world, but if it's sat in your shop for a year or two, it might be a little difficult. If that's, that's the issue, most every ink you can bring back to that original consistency by folding and stirring that ink or pre-shearing that ink. Uh, poly inks and low bleed inks body up over time. So we want to pre-shear those always before you put them in the uh, screen. They can be hard to, to uh, stir, you know, to get a, a knife and stir around. So take out what you think you're going to use into a smaller vessel and mix and fold that up. And by folding, I mean bring the bottom up to the top and then just really cut and shear that ink. I've seen uh, offset printers that still mix their ink on a piece of glass with like a bread knife. I've done it with ink, it's awesome. Maybe yeah. you don't need that mess to pick up or to clean up. Uh, but one so trick, just, one trick. If you're getting in a bucket that you've been in the day before, so it's, you know it's stirred well, but it's, say it's a cold morning, I would always just stir off about the top inch and a half, stir that up and use it, and then definitely get in, get in a separate bucket and stir and mix it as I'm going to the press and then put it in. It's already, you're shearing it down. All, Union is a fixotropic ink. All the inks are, all the whites. So you can bring it down by shearing it. People say, warm it up. Don't put it under a flash unit. <laughs> no. Don't put it in on top of the oven. Just shear it. We're warming it up by shearing it. Um, and it becomes very creamy and easy to use. Yeah, you know, with fixotropic inks, you know, when people ask me for the easy explanation for that, I just simply explain to them, 
extreme temperatures bodied up. So extreme cold will body it up, extreme heat will body up because you're, you're partially curing the ink. It wants to be at room temperature. Get that ink back at room temperature, get it moving, and it'll, it'll print fine. Um, if you're in a cold shop, don't store your ink on the, the cement floor. Get it up off the floor, even if it's on some two-by-fours or a little roller rack, or if you have to uh, store it into an HVAC-controlled office at night. That'll help a lot with that ink. Um, I got another so tip, too. If you're in a cold area, you should buy your, your whites in fives instead of ones because it takes longer for that ink to cool down, mm -hmm. you know, so. That's a good tip. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, and so also, I like... White. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'd like to add, I mean, I know that's, that's great information, but we also have on our website, if you guys go or anybody goes into our website in unioninc.com and click on Print Academy, we have a section called Tips and Techniques. And uh, you're gonna, I mean, the, anyone can find several educational articles posted there that can help with this kind of information. That's right, that's awesome. Uh, so with Lovely Diamond White, like I said, it's been around for a long time. There's people that just will not try any other white. Once they know how to use it, it works for almost everything for them. The first time I ever had any issues with it was on Tri-Blends. So we have an ink for that as well. Uh, but you may find you have a little bit longer flash times on Diamond White. Make sure that your garment can hold up to that. Uh, if that's not the case, we have Eclipse Low Bleed. Uh, yeah, Low Bleed White. So both mm -hmm. Diamond and Eclipse rely on a blowing agent to create a mineral barrier to keep your dye migration from coming up through your shirt into your ink film. And then we have brightening agents to help uh, almost bleach out the, the dye that settles on top there. So Eclipse, again, is a part of the, uh, the stellar white line. These all match, like I said before. So, uh, Eclipse is a great, you know, just all around the shop, uh, low bleed. It really works well on uh, hoodies. If I have to do any, kind of, any thick or spongy uh, garments, I usually default to Eclipse. But having said that, with the uh, you know diamond white and eclipse having blowing agent, a lot of your uh, polys have blowing agent. We have another uh, low bleed, kind of our boutique low bleed white, and that's mercury white. Now mercury white doesn't rely so much on blowing agent, and what makes a difference there is with your your low bleeds and polys that have blowing agent. The more heat it gets, the more it's going to puff because that's a similar chemistry to what we have in our puffs there. So mercury has a different chemistry. On some garments that may not be as strong as diamond or eclipse, but for most of your tri-blends, uh, you know, your more boutique style garments, it works great. It's got a super nice finish. If you could feel these amazing prints here, Mercury doesn't have the profile that Eclipse does. So if you're printing on an American Apparel, Bella, Canvas, a burnout shirt, you know, don't just throw on the regular low bleed on there. You're, you're going to add some weight to it and take away from that hand. Mercury is really good at controlling fibrillation on, the, on those shirts and then not being too heavy of a print on that garment. It doesn't take away from your hand so much. So kind of working down our sheet here, uh, when you get down to your poly inks, we have a couple of poly inks that we've had for a little while. Uh, we have our premium poly white. This is a, it's just a great proven poly white. Uh, it's classic in the sense that it does have blowing agent in it. Uh, it's a great white for weird applications. So if you've got to print on polypropylene bags that you need to add nylabon to the white to get a good adhesion to, uh, or you're printing windbreakers, this is a good white for that. You can essentially add Nylabon to any of these whites and get a great effect, but the premium poly white is a, is a, a tried and true white for this purpose. Um, in addition to that, we've got our, uh, I always call it Pate white, but it's actually athletic white. The number is P-A-T-E 1000, but <laughs> Pate white is a, uh, a white that was developed for 1980s football uniforms, essentially. So it's, a, it's a, a developed to adhere to nylon garments. It doesn't really have any dye blocking uh, ability, but it's got great adhesion and it's super, super stretchy. This white, if somebody wants a silicone feel, but doesn't know, they're afraid of silicone um, and, and they just want to have a really stretchy uh, print deposit on say like an Under Armour, there's some cool tricks you can add to this. You can add Unistret 10 to 15%. Uh, you can print that on a low bleed clear under base that maybe you've added the, the stretch that on, but you can get a really stretchy, nice uh, print deposit on that. It is pretty glossy. So going back to our, our poly whites, the premium poly white is a medium gloss. The athletic white is a high gloss. And then we come to our cosmic poly white. Cosmic poly white, again, <laughs> matches all these stellar whites. It's the first in our low cure whites. Uh, this cures between 280 and 290. So 280 in a gas dryer, 290 in an electric dryer. It's got a nice matte finish. Um, minimal puff. You can get more puff by extending your dwell time if you like that during the whole kind of 80s revival around Stranger Things. I was doing a lot of like 1980s 8-bit prints. 
and really just kind of slowing down that that dwell time and getting a really nice kind of cool 80s feel to it. it, it it's, it's a fun white uh, print width. But one of my favorite things about Cosmic White is you always have these people that want a universal white. Why can't I have just one white to go on everything? And one, one part of that answer is if you have a cotton garment, why are you going to put an expensive white on it when you could have saved money with the cotton white? You know, be smart about where you're spending your, your money around the shop. And then you also have the, the risk of uh, ghosting. When you have a low bleed or a poly garment, it's a really high humid day. If you allow your shirts to uh, gather up in a box at the end of the belt instead of cooling them down and, and setting them into cool stacks, you may experience ghosting. And as Carla mentioned before, if you go to unioning.com under tools, there's an article on ghosting, how to control it, and how to test for it. So going back to uh, Cosmic Poly White, this uh, is just a fun white to work with. And if you want a, an answer for the whole shop, and I can't reason with the person, I can't explain to them why they should print a little bit smarter, I just throw Cosmic Poly White at them. Probably <laughs> should, but it's worked so you know pretty well so far. Um, I don't know if it's true now, but as of last year, in pretty much every uh, major city that I serviced, we were selling a ton of, you know, uh, Cosmic Poly White and drums to at least one or two of the big print shops there. Now, Cosmic Poly White also has a companion uh, poly gray. So if you, can't, if you can afford to put down a gray under base and the poly white on top of that, this is a great combination for camos, uh, tie-dyes, anything that's just a really bad sublimator. These two products are, were meant to go together. They work terrific. But I understand if you're doing numbering, you can only hit it one time, go with the Cosmic Poly White. But if you're doing logo work um, and you need that extra bleed resistance, I always opt for a gray first. You're doing two whites anyway. Make one of them a gray, and that second white will cover it if you print with less pressure. And you'll have two different types of bleed resistant things working for you. And you'll have a much more success stop and bleed with that combination than you would quitting the same ink down twice. I always recommend going with gray than white if you're going on something that's going to really give you problems, sublimated dyes or or uh, it's a really bad um, uh, brushed polyester or something like that. And another kind of trick with that is that if you have a garment that won't flash very well if it's shrinking, having a gray there allows you to flash it quicker and then you can put your white on top of that. So there's lots of little tricks in here. And then our last and most recent white, and I think Carla's going to talk about this a little later on, we have our Sport Low Cure series. Right. This cures as low as 270. So going back to Cosmic, Cosmic works best between that 280 to 300. If you go above 300, 320, you, you're probably going to see some failures. The Sport Low Cure has developed four poly garments uh, to print as low as 270, or if you have cottons coming in the same belt as your, your polys, it'll, it'll stand up to 320. But if you really, if you have a, a, a garment from outside of the country that just really wants to dye sublimate, try to get that temperature down to the, the lowest point there. Um, I've been of the opinion that, you know, if you're a good screen printer, you can put most any ink on anything if all controls are in place. But another thing to take into consideration is your, your cost, your overhead. So if you're flashing and curing at a lower temperature, you're consuming less gas, you're consuming less electricity, and you're making your shop a little bit more livable in the middle of summer. Yep, yep, that, that's right. And yeah, as you, as you mentioned, I mean, the, the reason why we developed the Union Low Cure Series was to bring a solution to the printers for things like dye migration or fabric distortion that usually happen um, when you cure at the regular plastisol temperature at 320 or so. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we launched this line last year and I have to say, another thing that I'd like to mention about the Union Low Cure is that it has a big advantage. Um, there you go, that's a color card. Uh, because the chemistry we use for that line basically allows for the product to sit for longer periods of time and still be stable. And this was a big requirement we had from some of our major sporting brands. So at the same time that we comply with that, we allow for our distributors to have product available at all times for our printers in this product line, in the, in the low cure line. Um, another great thing, the great opacity that it has, it allows us to print onto the fabric, directly onto the fabric. Well, I got to That's say, you know, especially in low cure, uh, it'd be the same as any of the poly whites. Uh, the Fixotropic ink, uh, when you receive that bucket of ink, it is never as thick as it is in that bucket. Once you start using it, it always shears down. You'll never get thicker. So the thing is, if it's uh, unless it's freezing cold. But what I'm saying is, if, if you 
understand that. Don't freak out when you receive ink that looks like it's almost solid. Bring it out and stir it down. If you have a shaker, even better. If you have a, uh, you know, a turnabout or, or or something like that, go ahead and use it. You get it creamy, um, and it's just it's just regular printing after that. Right. You know, right. another thing to uh, look out for. If say it's this summer, you buy your first low cure ink, and you're going to get a gallon bucket or a quart bucket, it's going to look like it's filled to the top. In the winter, you you may see an inch where that it looks like we did we underfilled the ink. We fill it by weight, and you're getting all of your ink there. But low cures and polys do expand over time. Yeah. Again, if it looks like it's expanded, just whip it back down. You can bring it back to its original state by just folding and shearing. Do we have any questions, Ray? Yes, we had a couple. And I think you might have addressed this one. Let me find this. Will plastic chars affect the strength of magenta ink? It will. Yes, because of it, well, a magenta <laughs> solid color, a magenta process. Well, the process, I'm thinking, is what he's because that's what we were speaking about. I, I would say either one. I mean, but uh, I would say yes. Yeah, what you you addressed that maybe we should um, put less uh, discharge agent in a magenta ink to go. But uh, when you but you have it, next would be to discharge your underbase and then print your magenta on top of that. Yeah. Let's see. What well, mesh counts for plastic charge? You know, start at 110. If you've got higher detail, I'll go up to 156. I've gone up to 230 for really small logos and line work. But ideally, you've got some thicker particles there. The more you get that to pass to the screen, the better of a discharge effect you're going to see. And then on that, uh, this kind of made me think of a tip. The way I learned how uh, discharges and plastic charges behave was by just uh, working with a heat gun. So I had a, an image of a New Orleans manhole cover, big circular image, printed that on a garment. And then on the press, I took a heat gun and just started to paint it. If you, you know, just start to paint it with the, the heat gun. So as you're heating the center, you're gonna get a brighter effect there. And you can let the outside just kind of feather out to the shirt and you get more of a three-dimensional effect. There's a lot of cool things you can do with discharge with just playing with it. Um, if you're in a small electric dryer for the first time, you may find you have to run that through twice. We'd like to get a 60 second dwell on, on discharges and plastic charges if at all possible. But if you're not getting a full develop, take it right back in the dryer and run it through again. If you give it time, the develop's going to finish on its own and not give you that full vibrancy. Get it back in the dryer right away. But ideally, gas dryer uh, is best. Plastic charge is pretty forgiving, so you can do it with an electric dryer. I have one coming up. I can't find it. Well, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll get one. I find it, but it says. Um... Can you mix the plastic charge with any plastic stall brand ink? Technically, yes, but this is where Max Opaque really shows its value. Max Opaque has that triple opacity, so you're going to get that true color. Uh, back when we used to compete against each other, that was one of my, my demos would be the show brand A and then show our brand with the plastic <laughs> charge. Max Opaque is really the one that, that shows that vibrancy there. It doesn't lose that color value so much because it is extendable. I would think that if you're mixing our brands, uh, I would always go for the, some kind of mixing system that has a strong single uh, pigment, pigment. Base, uh, something that will t will can handle that uh, that strength because it, that can handle that additive. So you're adding it in there. So you're weakening that color. Uh, it's best to have something that's going to be strong in the in the onset. You know, another couple of tips too. When you mix your uh, plastic charge or any discharge, once you've mixed in the ZFS, cover it up with the lid, walk away for 10 minutes, let it, let it do its job, and then print with it. You'll, you'll get a better effect. Because if you, if you put the ink in right away, you'll notice that your plastic charge starts to work better a little bit later as your, your palettes heat up uh, and the plastic charge is starting to react with itself. Uh, another tip too, as your plastic charge or discharge shirts are coming down your belt, your catcher, have them pick up the shirt and pop it. Pop off that dust and then stack them. You'll get a softer hand uh, versus just putting it in the box right away. Well, we're coming up on 35 minutes. We probably need to shut down so people watch the <laughs> We'll be monitoring these, uh, all the comments and answering questions uh, all day and probably you know from now on. As long as the comment comes up, we'll try to answer it right away. Uh, we thank everybody here. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, guys. This was fun. Thank you, John. They're taking most of the questions. It's awesome. <laughs> Hope everybody enjoyed it, and uh, let's, um, let's keep in touch. You guys ask any questions you want. We'll be on it. Thank you.
Awesome. Bye. Wednesday.